Uh, good morning. Um, my name is uh, Gijs Watsenberg, and I speak here for the uh, Thorium MSR Foundation. The Thorium MSR Foundation is established, has been established uh, early 2016. Our volunteer operation, basically, and we, our goal is to spread accurate information about the developments on thorium molten salt reactors. In order to achieve that, we cooperate with scientists in the field uh, so we can check the information and spread out uh, uh, the information that is really accurate. We do many things. Um, we uh, have a website with information in it. And we also organize what we call meet and greets. Uh, we are all operating on a very, very low budget, so we have to be smart uh, in what we do. Um, and one of the things that happens is that because we have several uh, uh, research facilities in, in the Netherlands, we have the Delft program and we have the NRG program. I will go into that a bit more later on. Uh, but that means that uh, on many occasions, uh, researchers in the molten salt uh, fields uh, are visiting the Netherlands. And we uh, always jump on those occasions to uh, uh, have a, a meeting, and we call it meet and greets. And we had a very interesting meet and greet last December with a delegation from uh, Synap, which, as you may know, is the largest, it's presently the largest uh, real molten salt, thorium molten salt program in the world. And still, we got message earlier that year that these researchers were very excited about what was going on in the Netherlands. It was also the reason that we got into contact with them. The reason there for their excitement at the time was that the salient experiments had started, which, con uh, which consists of very small crucibles of molten salt that are put inside the H high flux reactor. And so we are really already experimenting with the molten salt and with the thorium. So we jumped on the occasion and uh, uh, three of these uh, Synab researchers agreed to have a meet and greet with our thorium, our Dutch thorium fans. So why were they so interested in, the, in, in visiting the Netherlands and, and, and uh, especially in, in the, uh, what was going on in the high flux reactor? And uh, they told us uh, that basically, and I'm quoting here, presently only NRG can do irradiation tests at high enough neutron dose with molten salt. So that was our big confirmation. The researchers in Patton had been telling that us for several years, but now we got it confirmed from three members of the biggest molten salt research program in the world. So it was quite something. And I have to tell you about the thorium, and I, I heard very little in the Foratom uh, presentation, unfortunately, uh, but the, the Chinese are dead serious about the thorium research. And they told us this. This is basically, it's a very f small slide, but it's basic, what this slide basically says, this is the Chinese nuclear ambition in one slide. And what it tells you is that they have presently have 100 gigawatts of nuclear power uh, spinning uh, electricity, and they want to triple that between now and 2030. So in 10 years, to, they want to have three times more nuclear power running. And but all of that nuclear power will come from uh, pressurized water reactors. And on top of that, they have this huge uh, um, a research program for the thorium. Why is that? It's very simple. When they have 300 gigawatts of nuclear re uh, power uh, spinning, uh, China will become hungry for uranium. And they don't want to be dependent on uranium imports, so that's why they desperately need the thorium. That's why they're researching it. Now, I swept to another side of the world, to Terra Power. You know, as you know, uh, it's the Bill Gates, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the uh, nuclear startup that was founded and, and is financed by Bill Gates. And uh, TerraPower surprised the world in 2015 by announcing that they were uh, doing, uh, uh, they had entered the molten salt uh, uh, reactor research field. <coughs> they had, a, had their own concept, uh, the molten chloride fast reactor. and. Uh, that is a, a special brand uh, of, uh, it's a variation, it's not thorium, but it's a, it's a small salt reactor. But the big news this year was that uh, the government had been moving in. So TerraPower is now being financed with money of the Department of Energy. And they had uh, received $28 million uh, for their uh, loop type experiment. And that's a very uh, important uh, word here. So they want, what, they, what they want to do, what uh, TerraPower wants to do is to create a molten salt loop in which they can investigate the thermodynamics. I have to maybe explain the loop. The loop is a very simple concept. You make a tube with molten salt and you have the molten salt flow in it. And 
it's very important that you can do the, uh, the research of, of a dynamic system. So not only of the separate parts of the, of the materials and, and the salt, but also to have the interaction between the materials while it is running. We have $28 million for that right now. And they want to build it in 2019, I think. But guess what? The uh, TerraPower experiment is non-Newtonic, meaning there's no Newtons, there's no fission, there's no fission products, so they only have, basically, they only have part of the whole story. And that's a very important aspect. The Dutch researchers working on this are very, sh are very uh, affirmative about their insight that what, when you want to overcome the regulatory hurdles in molten salt reactor development, you need to, all, to test all aspects in one single system. And that is what the, exactly what the researchers in Delft and Patton plan to do. And they can do that because we have a facility, it's called the high flux reactor. And it's a high flux reactor, it's surrounded by a whole range of uh, hot cell laboratories, so we have basically, we have the whole thing sitting there waiting for it to happen, there in Patton. And here it is. So what you see here, it's, uh, uh, it's first for the names. NRG is the, name for, is, is the Netherlands, uh, the Nuclear Research and Consultancy Group, and it operates the high flux reactor. And in the high flux reactor, presently, I, th I think about 30% of the world's uh, use of uh, uh, medical isotopes are being produced uh, right there. But the uh, high flux reactor has lots of, uh, lots of capacity that's unused. So we can also use, besides the medical uh, isotope production, we can use it for very interesting experiments. Now I get it a bit closer, here it is, and basically it's a, it's a pool type reactor. It's a swimming pool, but uh, few people swim in it actually. It's, uh, what you see there is, uh, uh, what you see there is the, the light coming out of uh, the uh, reactor core. So some people, I, I think in this audience everybody knows that this is not Photoshop. This is the real thing. Uh, the light is actually coming from the reactor core. It's the Cherenkov effect. It's, it's a very beautiful uh, blue-white light, and it's sort of magic if you stand at the pool and see when you see the light uh, coming out of it. The interesting thing about the uh, reactor is, is that it has a, a high flux, and for this type of research you need a high flux of newtons. In this picture, it's a more uh, schematic view from, uh, the, on, the, on the top of the reactor. This, this is the, the look from above. And the uh, uh, red spots, as you can see, are, are fuel uh, elements. And there's, uh, of course, the, 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 the control rods and there's reflectors on three sides. And in these, uh, in the blues, these blue zones are really, these, these are the flux zones. So that's where they put the experiments in from top. And that's what you saw the, saw the guys doing, having a long tube, put the experiments in and, 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 and getting exactly the flux that you need. Now, the unique uh, aspect of the HFR is that it actually has a flux zone at the outside of the reactor. This, this, this zone, this is really a unique thing in the world. We have a, a high flux zone that is outside of the reactor, and that high flux zone uh, allows you to place big structures. And that is exactly what the researchers in the Netherlands want to do. They want to place a big structure on the balcony just outside of the reactor. And this is what they want to place there. This is also a loop type experiment. What you have to think of is the size of a refrigerator. And you see the uh, only part of the loop. Huh? So, so this structure is the loop. And this blue piece will be closest to the reactor core. And that what, that's where they want to, and, and uh, so they want to place it close to the reactor so this part can be as close to the reactor as they can, can, can get it. The really exciting thing is that they want to have the full deal in this, in this experiment. So don't, don't, they want to put in the, the, the salt, the flype salt, but also with the fission material in it. So we will have uh, fissioning going on in the reactor. So we will have fission, we will have energy, we will have uh, fission products. All of this taking place in this dynamic system, and uh, there's, the fl there's a flow of about a, a couple of meters per second. So this is really and at the real temperature that is also expected in the reactor. So it degrees from six to 700 degrees Celsius, that's, that's the expectation. So you really have all of the aspects in a single, so the, the, the real, the total, the, uh, the, the real environment that you can expect also in a molten salt reactor. And the experiment is called LUMOS. And it's, well, everybody knows Lumos, of course, from Harry Potter, the, the, the magic wand, and showing him the way. 
So that's very symbolic. Uh, the, the, we also need a magic wand to show us the way here. And, 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 uh, but the, the, it's an abbreviation for very, something very humble. It's just learning to use molten salt. That's the essence of what the researchers want to do. We, we just have to learn to use it again because salt and all the aspects are, they have some uh, very can have some very unexpected properties. The other night, uh, a researcher from a Canadian uh, nu uh, National Laboratory, Nuclear Laboratory, I must say, said they had, had done some uh, experiments on uh, salt at, at extreme conditions, and the behavior was very unexpected. So it's not well. It was not really behaved at temperature at a thousand degrees. And that is really what you need to know, and you have need experiments uh, for that to establish that and to really make a, a good system. And here we have a picture of the outside. This is, this is a, a, a photograph of uh, what is called this uh, pools, poolside facility. So this is where the, uh, the, the Cherenkov light is coming out. You see here this, this uh, steel balcony. And what you want to do is to place this uh, loop structure on the balcony just outside the reactors. You see this, this loop is now turned the wrong direction. It should make a quarter turn to face the reactor. That's the idea. And the cost of this experiment, uh, we have estimated at about 50 million uh, euros. And that is more than I have in my pocket. But for this type of experiment, it is dirt, dirt cheap. It is really very cheap. We can do this so cheaply because all the, all the facilities, all the expensive stuff is already there. It's just waiting there for us to use it and just waiting for this budget. This whole experiment has, has been on the drawing board. It can be finished quickly. We only need the money. I cannot I maybe stress that enough. It may be, for this, type of, uh, for, this, for this part of the world, it may be the only way to get across the regulatory hurdles that are in the way of developing a real working molten salt reactor. The, the guys in China, uh, they have a different regulatory framework. They can build a reactor near the Gansu, uh, in Gansu, near the Siberian border. Uh, it's a very small reactor, and I don't know how they will do it, but it's, uh, it's, let's, let's just say they work under a different regulatory regime than we have to do. So it's incredibly low cost, and uh, there is also the urgency of this whole thing, because there is a certain time frame in which this needs to take place. The high-flux reactor is due for closure in 2025. There is already a, a follower being planned, the palace reactor, and we want uh, the, the idea is to make a hot swap between the two reactors, so the, the old one is only shut down when the new one has really started. At present, we do not know whether the palace reactor does have this uh, poolside facility as well. So it is at, this, at this point in time, we are not sure that we can, t can continue these experiments, and when we want to have them finished by 2025, we better get started soon. Now, LUMOS is only part of a larger program uh, uh, that uh, we have called uh, uh, D DEMOS, the Dutch, Initiatives on Mol Dutch Initiative on Molten Salt. And that's a joint plan of NRG, of Delft Technical University, Technical University of Eindhoven, of Twente, and several other institutions. So it's important to notice that the program is already uh, on its way. Uh, the first part being the salient irradiations that the Chinese got excited about. That's already taken place. LUMOS, we could start with LUMOS quite soon, uh, as, as soon as, as the budget, budget is there. But of course, there are many other aspects, and I've listed them here, uh, that will all need to be taken care of uh, when we want to have this uh, thing going. One aspect, and that I think is quite different, uh, the, the, the view, the, the, the vision of the Dutch research is, is different uh, from many other uh, developers in that way, that you ne really need to have all the materials qualifications at hand, before you can actually make a very smart design. So in, in this program, at presently, there's not much work going on, on on reactor design because the researchers feel that we need to have the catalog of materials and of salts and everything, the behavior, uh, uh, before we actually put them into this Chinese puzzle that is the molten salt reactor. So here's the takeaway. It's really, this is a unique opportunity. The HFR, with this uh, concept, presents us with a, a unique uh, uh, opportunity. And that's uh, the big question right now. I am hearing of Foratom that there's budget for research. We are very interested in the budget. Um, and, but I th also think when talking to governments, uh, our, our national government, but also the European Commission, like what Kirk said, we want a, a, a future of clean energy uh, for uh, generations to come. 
And uh, this experiment is really a way to kick open the door to the future. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>